Brothers, sisters, here, I suppose, this is the talk on Dharma. So, the usually uh, when uh, when I make uh, Dharma talk, usually it's some few prayer before I do. So the one prayer, which um, the essentially the meaning is, the remember Buddha and then remind the essence of his teaching. That's we should watch one's own mind constantly and then trying to minimize negative emotion and try to increase uh, positive emotion so that our action uh, will be more positive, will be more positive, so then our future will be uh, uh, happier. So that's the, uh, the essence of Buddha's teaching. <clears throat> so remind you to that thing. Then finally, uh, dedication. So that's the meaning of the short prayer. Dumba jumped in the ditches of what I don't buy on the walls of a Sunday report. I shall find them about the hour. I shall watch it in your park. You want to call you a lana, my father, the men of the Dumba Sunday Jumping. Pega, I shall go to Bala, Shazel, or Shadow Jabsoche, or Gazaganis, or Jadam, the Sajan, the law combatum. Gombo to I will try to explain the essence of Buddhism through my own broken English. Occasionally, um, I may explain in two pattern. So my helper will translate. <clears throat> then basically, uh, you see the, every sentient being, and particularly human being, you see, everyone wants you see, happiness and do not want suffering. And everyone uh, trying to achieve that goal. I think the, uh, everyone is involved or committed according uh, at the method which uh, the, each one believes the best and the effective method. So, um, the, and then again, you see, the method uh, become much variety or a lot of differences, different method came because they, although all one, you see, they want happiness, 
but the happiness, there are, I think, many different uh, levels or uh, different levels, or I think the different meaning according to different individual. In other words, I think the happiness in the sense, uh, short interest or short, the near future or longer future, or that kind of visit, uh, depend on these uh, sort of, time factor. Uh, time factor, or how to say, I don't know. The, you see, some people uh, consider uh, the immediate interest is most important. Some people you see, see the, the longer uh, term uh, consider more important, things like that. So, uh, so there, I think they, it becomes differ mainly. You see, one group of people, uh, all sentient being, and including human being, you see, mainly, you see, they pursue uh, through material development, through material, material, material sense, right? Through the means of material progress. You see, another, uh, the hmm, trying to achieve that goal through more a spiritual way. Perhaps I think today, the about five billions of humanity, uh, I think majority simply is concerned about material material thing, and obviously is it a much more concerned about money money matter. And then there's a small group of people, you see, think. Uh, the importance of spiritual experiences. And then within the group of people who believe, you see, some, form, some different kind of see, religions, there are also, you see, uh, basically, I think, you see, two groups. One group of religious belief is, you see, the creator is the supreme, hmm, I say, supreme thing. The creator is the basic belief, basic faith. Uh, then another group, uh, Buddhism and Jainism, and also one ancient Hindu religion, a part of Hindu religion, that is Sangya philosophy. Within Sangya, there is you see, two groups. Uh, one except Brahma, is the supreme, the creator. The one uh, do not accept that kind of a creator. So including that, so mainly I think three ancient Indian philosophy do not accept the creator theory. Then within that, uh, or the another, I think the another category, <clears throat> again there are I think two groups. One, you see the, uh, one group accept the, I believe, the, is it just the, I say like the, uh, the heaven or concept of heaven or some other this kind of thing, or the happier life. Uh, do not consider or do not talk about uh, the nirvana or moksha. So one group, is it they consider the ultimate, you see, uh, goal should be nirvana, moksha. So that they consider that is the permanent happiness or lasting happiness. So that called moksha or nirvana. Now within that, uh, again, you see, one group uh, uh, believe moksha or nirvana is something like a country, something like heavenly, you see, it's something like... Something like a, a different place to be reached. Uh, uh, then, you see, the, uh, Buddhism, you see, do not accept uh, the moksha, not that kind. Moksha means the mental state where they completely purified one's own mind, and then the, that state of mind called moksha. Mm. And then within Buddhist, again, you see the, uh, uh, like the Vibhasek uh, school of thought, you see, they say, they, when you see, mm, 
the individual uh, become Buddha and reach Mahabharata Nirvana, then no more continuation of that being, that person. Uh, say, uh, that person, individual, individual person or individual identity, no more. So, so that's one, hmm, say one, one school of thought. Then the rest of the school of thought, and particularly like Nagarjuna, you see, he stated, if that is the case, then the uh, who achieve nirvana? And how to say is who achieve nirvana or uh, Mahabharata nirvana? So long Mahabharata nirvana, so long the being is there, uh, not Mahabharata nirvana, not, not the Mahabharata nirvana, but as soon as Mahabharata nirvana materialized, no more person. So then it is difficult to say the, our goal or our, our final how it, uh, goal or aim uh, is, it should be nirvana. Now that is difficult to say. So therefore, the Nagarjuna say the whole mind not necessarily negative. So mind, basic mind is neutral. Uh, can be influenced either by positive emotion as well as a negative emotion. The basic mind is pure. Therefore, the, uh, there is no reason when we purified our mind, the mind should, should discontinue. Right. So therefore, the, the purification of our mind means uh, the negative influences or negative imprint by negative emotion, that part can purify. Uh, this does not mean, you see, the basic mind has hmm, disappeared. So the basic mind will remain. Now mind, when we say mind, there are, hmm, usually, you see, we got the impression, mind means something beside this body, there is some kind of see, independent hmm, identity. Uh, that's not the case. The, when we say mind, there are so many different levels of mind. The, uh, basically, two categories. One grosser level of mind, one subtle mind. The grosser level of mind is actually the production of this brain, human brain. So although the animal and insect and human being, you see, we have, you see, the, uh, we are, I mean, same-centered being. We also have the innate desire to be happy, uh, to achieve happiness. Mm, however, because due to different brain, different body, different brain, the mental capacity, you see, to acknowledge, where? Shema, uh, Realizes and uh, is aware of the object. Uh, you see, there is differences. The human, human mind, much more intelligent than those, you see, other animal. Within animal, there is, you see, differences, the amount of intelligence because of the brain. So therefore, obviously, you see, the grosser level of mind is uh, so long the mental function is there, these intelligence also is to work, or these minds also work. As soon as mental function ceases, you see, these grosser level of mind no more. <clears throat> but then most in subtle level, uh, there's still the continuity of a kind of mind. I don't know whether it's the proper word we call mind or consciousness, I don't know. Usually, usually, the, according to my own small English vocabulary, I usually call mind. But I don't know, that's, that's up to you, you know, you know better. <coughs> mm, so, the... Mm, so our... Mm, the, mm, the our belief, now even this is some, now these days also, this is some people, even after death, I mean, they medically say, you see, already dead. Because, you see, no more breath, no more blood circulation, no more heart beating, and no more the brain function. Yet, you see, that body, that dead body still uh, not decay, decaying, still remain uh, fresh. So I'm such, uh, I'm such uh, phenomena usually you see, occur. It's not only, I think, necessarily among Tibetan Buddhists, 
a Buddhist practitioner. But I was told to some other, you see, uh, uh, as in the case also, you see, such things uh, happened, I, I heard. So in any way, uh, so this, the, I mean, this, this factor, we believe the grosser level of mind already uh, sees to exist. But the subtle mind is still there in that body, so that the body uh, is not decaying. So from that viewpoint, the, that, that moment or that period we call dying person, not death. So as soon as that, you see, the body become decayed and getting this bad smell or things like that, or the change, you see, the, the how to say, facial, what's that? The facial complexion. Mm -hmm. uh, then, you see, the, we consider death. So therefore, you see, uh, this is one reason, it's one, according to our belief, you see, this is one evidence, you see, there could be, you see, the uh, different level of mind. And also, you know, you see, in the, um, in the awake time, now, just this moment, you see, we are using certain, the certain level of mind. We are using certain mind. These are very, gro very, very grosser level. Then, when we are in the state of dream, the another deeper level of mind occur. And they even the the deep sleep without dream. That moment, another more deeper level of mind, you see, experiencing. Then the uh, occasion when you see someone faint, fainted, even you see stop the breathing. That moment, you see the another deeper level of mind, you see experiencing. Then finally, when we dying, the time of death, the the most, or the subtle, the mind, you see, uh, manifest. Uh, manifest. <clears throat> So, therefore, the, this is the, you see, the one reason or one evidence, you see, according to Buddhism, you see, the, we accept rebirth theory. <clears throat> In any case, whether you say we can prove uh, next life or not, the, the concept of rebirth is for us very useful because, you know, uh, when we accept see, the limitless lives, previous lives and next lives, then you see this life is just part of that life. So, if even you see some the miserable life, or some you see tragic uh, tragedies, some many tragedies, tragic lives you see uh, happen in this life, but still, you see the. Uh, you always have the hope, you see, in the future. There are a lot of see, lives will continue. If they accept only one life, then if this life becomes worthless, then no hope, isn't it? So therefore, you see, the concept of rebirth theory is so to those people you see, who accept that philosophy is something uh, helpful in the sense widened our mind, our concept. <clears throat> And at least we, we find some, uh, I mean, some life to blame. <laughs> because of this life, something happened, some unfortunate things happened. Oh, we can say, oh, our previous life something done something bad. So today we suffer. <laughs> so instead of blaming on other, or oh, he did, or oh, she did, instead of do that, you see, just blame our own previous life. So anyway, useful, isn't it? <laughs> At least I think less trouble. If you blame oneself, one's previous life, I mean, there's not much, you see, danger. If everything blame on, on there, uh, then you see more danger, more problem. So this is the uh, one you see, Buddhist. So, so the, mm, the more profound Buddhist school of thought they say the continuation of mind is always there. No beginning, no end. Therefore, when, uh, like Buddha Shakyamuni, 
when uh, at Kushinaga, when he achieved Mahapari Nirvana, that does not mean the Buddha's individual mind sees completely. It's the Buddha's mind is still there. Then the next question is the according, yes, uh, according to the Buddhist concept. Now, if it's a Buddha Shakyamuni's mind still remain there, then what kind of mental state? What kind of you see, the, uh, the next his, his engagement? Right. Or next thing. And then there you see the, uh, the Bodhisattva Yana or Mahayana state says the Buddha Shakyamuni is just a manifestation of the uh, another, you see, the higher. Another being who has achieved higher realization. Mm. So therefore, the, in any case, the, when Shakyamuni Buddha uh, say, disappeared, his physical, his body, then his mind is still there. So that uh, usually we call the Dharmakaya. Or another word, what's it, the, something like the Kasada. It's called uh, something like a truth body. Yes. Mm. <coughs> now, from uh, from tantric viewpoint, uh, then you see the, this very mind, or uh, this mind, when this mind, they completely purified all the negative influences, negative imprints, then then you see that mind become uh, the mind of Buddha. Another word we call Dharmakaya. Then the energy, subtle energy, which all the time is it remain with mind, or the one aspect of the mind, which we call inner air, or the, uh, the subtle energy. Now that, as soon as, as, soon as the mind part is it become the dharmakaya, you see the, uh, the energy which come along with that automatically becomes sambhogakaya. So that is the, uh, the, uh, the sources of all the different manifestations of Buddha. So like the Buddha Shakyamuni uh, consider a call from Mahayana scriptures, Nirmanakaya. So there are three different levels of see, Buddhas. Yeah. So another word, you see, we also, you see, they uh, say, the uh, Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, Nirmanakaya is almost like a, the symbol of Buddhist mind, speech, and body. That also sometimes called like that. <clears throat> so, so now you see here, in, in, within Buddhism, you see there are different interpretation about you see, the state of Buddhahood and also moksha. And I think the, the different explanation about moksha comes mainly the different interpretation about ultimate reality. That's what we call shunya. So due to the different explanation about shunya, so the definition of moksha also becomes different. And also the definition of Delusions. Delusion, right. Delusion. Afflictive emotions. Uh, afflictive emotions. Yes, afflictive emotion. You see, that or the ultimately the ignorance, it's a definition of Ill, Ill, the ignorance become differ. So now here I would like to, so this to me is a very, very useful. In the sense, you see, when I saw, you see, the different philosophy or different, as the interpretation about, you see, the ultimate nature, ultimate reality, and you see, the state of Buddhahood, uh, that these different interpretation, generally relying on Buddha's own word. So it looks, Buddha Shakyamuni Buddha himself. You see, uh, 
she created all these different types of philosophy. As a philosophy, one another, you see, there is contradiction, there is a lot of argument, disagreement, but all comes from one source, Buddha, Buddha Shakyamuni. Then in a, looks, uh, in a way, Buddha deliberately creates a lot of misunderstanding between Buddhists Buddhist, Buddhist themselves. So this, uh, the reason is, the Buddha's teaching come for the benefit of his follower. So among his follower, there are different uh, mental disposition. Therefore, according each, uh, each mental disposition, right? Uh, the disposi mental disposition of the different individuals. Uh, individuals, you see, he taught accordingly, you see, the different uh, philosophy or different tradition different interpretation about ultimate reality. So there is, you see, the, uh, there is no reason to, uh, to make a conflict, right? So this is very helpful. Now, seeing within, our, within Buddhists ourselves, you see, that's, that things, you see, happen, then they towards other religions, other religious, you see, the tradition. Yes, there is big differences. Some say God, creator. Uh, some say, say there is no, no creator. But they, uh, it doesn't matter. You see, so long the each religion, each tradition have the potential to create better human being, warm-hearted person. Uh, that effect is there. In the past, so many centuries, you see, it, uh, I mean, it served millions, millions of people, even today. All these major world religions, such as Christianity, uh, Hinduism, and Judaism, and Muslim, and so on and so forth. You see, these, even today, you see, millions of people getting benefit from these different traditions. So, therefore, you see, uh, in order to develop mutual, I would say, the, I mean, genuine respect, genuine appreciation to all other different religions, you see, can, uh, uh, in, in order to develop that kind of attitude, this, you see, the different teaching within Buddhism is very, very helpful. So I just, you see, explain casually about these differences. <clears throat> now, you see, my basic, you should talk about the, 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 about the basic structure of Buddhism. Now that, now you see, everybody knows the uh, Buddha's, the first sermon, the Four Noble Truth. You see, the uh, two suffering and two causes of suffering and two cessation of the suffering and two paths to achieve two cessation. Now that's, you see, the Four Noble Truth. Now this is the basic Buddhist teaching. The Mahayana teaching, as well as the uh, Tantrayana, Buddhist Tantrayana teaching, all based on this, uh, I mean, this doctrine. I think, as a matter of fact, hmm, if someone uh, uh, practice according the Four Noble Truth teaching, yes, that person can achieve a certain certain achievement. Can achieve. Then suppose without uh, without let's say without practice of teaching according four noble truth and trying to uh, trying to practice you see, the uh, buddhicitta suppose the Mahayana teaching impossible uh, to get genuine experience because of this I mean without this practice. And tantric also, especially tantric teaching. Without these two other, you see, practice, basic practice, you see, you cannot uh, produce satisfactory result, or you cannot achieve the satisfactory uh, Experience. uh, experiences. So therefore, you see, the, uh, without these two, the practice of the, the the teaching on basis on the basis of four noble truth. Yes, you can, you can change, you can improve, 
you can achieve moksha. But without this, by these two, no, impossible. So therefore, this is the foundation of the whole Buddhism. Now, in Tibetan tradition, you see, we study these basic Buddhist teachings, and accordingly, we practice the uh, vipassana, wisdom, vipassana, and samadha, the one-pointedness of mind, uh, then the shila, the conduct, proper, uh, proper, proper morality, uh, proper morality, proper conduct. So these three, uh, three things, you see, as a the practice of the basic practice. Then on top of that, the Mahayana teaching, or Buddhisattva teachings, you see, the, the structure is with uh, infinite altruistic motivation. Then practice six perfections. Dana Paramita, Shila Paramita, Chendi Paramita, Bhya Paramita, Dhyana Paramita, Pranja Paramita, like the six, uh, six parameters or six perfections. <laughs> then on top of that, the Buddhist Tantrayana. Here, the, on the basis of these basic practice, then the, uh, the special feature in order to uh, develop quickly about Vipassana experience, then you see the Deity Yoga included. Deity Yoga comes, the practice of Deity Yoga. Uh, it comes. So therefore, the, uh, the basic aim of practice of deity mandala or the deity, deity yoga, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, powerful vipassana within short period, right, development of powerful, uh, forceful uh, vipassana within short period. That is the main purpose of the visualization of mandalas and deities. So one time, one, the Sri Lanka, I think, Bhikshu, you see, uh, put one very good question. Now, he told the, the visualization of mandala is attractive, but this, you see, uh, there is danger to increase zimba. Uh, grasping, clinging. Ah. Mm. You see, there is you see, danger to increase what is it? Strong grasping. Yes, strong grasping. You see, the feeling. Uh, yes, it is true. That's why in the, in, the, uh, in so many centuries uh, from India, the, uh, you see, the I said a subtle sort of discussion about the value of the meditation on deities, on mandala. It's a lot of debate, a lot of how say debates in the lot of how say the A lot of discussions are being made. Mm. Or m make made clarification or made the special explanation about the purpose of the uh, the uh, deity yoga. So, it's a Tibetan practice. It's all the uh, the essence of the Svaga yoga. Svaga, what's that? Shamata. Ka. Shamata. Mm, no, Nindu Deva. Nindu, Nindu Deva. Theravada tradition. Yes, uh, Theravada tradition or the Vinaya, Vinaya tradition, and then Bodhisattva tradition, and then Tantrayana tradition all come together and practice simultaneously. <clears throat> now the four noble truths. The, there are, you see, two, two things. Suffering, its cause, and permanent happiness, and its cause. You see, two things. The, the, everyone wants happiness and do not want suffering. So both suffering and happiness comes its own causes. When there is causes, when there is cause, the result will, generally speaking, definitely come. Without causes, even you want the result, 
there's no possibility to, to happen that. So, if you're concerned about uh, the uh, achievement of happiness, you must, uh, you must have a deal, or you must... Inter oh, sorry. You must uh, generate the causes, yes. no. with the causes of happiness, and remove the causes of the sufferings. So, you see, if you want, you see, the happiness, since happiness uh, depends on its causes, therefore, you must create, or you must have the causes of the happiness. Uh, if you do not want suffering, you must avoid the, the causes of suffering. So, this is the logic. So, this implicates the uh, things you see, entirely depend on its own causes. Then that causes also, you see, depend on its original causes. So go like that, causality, the law of causality. It's always go like that. And on this basis, one important you see, Buddhist, uh, Buddhist teaching is impermanence. What called anita, isn't it? Anita. Oh. Uh, always you see impermanence, always changing, momentarily changing. Mm. And also, you see, the since result is depend on causes. Without cause, result would not happen. So therefore, uh, the further elaboration about the cause and effects, you see, uh, link, the Buddha stated, uh, in order to explain the cause-effect relationship, Buddha expounded the Twelve uh, interdependent relations. Twelve mm. interdependent relations. Mm. Repeat. Clear. Mm. In order to explain the relationship between the cause and the effect, Buddha expounded the twelve uh, interdependent relations. Some kind of the twelve point is a Buddha mentioned. The, from the ignorance, mm. then action or karma, uh, then the chit or the mind. So go like that. The, uh, the uh, eleventh birth, the twelfth old age and the death. So the death and old age as a symbol of suffering. So that suffering, how it comes? So they, due to previous, you see, causes, conditions, you see, this, uh, the uh, suffering result, which we do not want, which we want to overcome. So, you see, so therefore, if we really want to overcome this suffering, we must deal with the first link, first link, or first, how say, first point. The first point. That's ignorance. In order to you see, they eliminate negative action or action which bring the negative result. Uh, you see, the, this action due to motivation. Here in the sense, here in the motivation, in the sense, ignorance or desire, attachment or hatred. So, so in order to remove you see, attachment or hatred, the ultimate cause of all negative emotion is ignorance. Therefore, the, unless you remove ignorance from your mind, the rest of the 11 you see, points automatically will come. So this Buddhist explanation also the, indicates the interdependent nature, law of interdependency. Again now, within you see, the I said, this is usually called the, the wheel of kasa, wheel of samsara, wheel of samsara. That means, you see, the, the ignorance, when it starts ignorance, while we are engaging you see, other activities, the ignorance, minute by minute, you see, there are a lot of ignorances, you see, happen. Due to ignorance, moment from moment, you see, engage uh, karma or action. So, the, within one wheel of samsara, the new beginning of 
new beginning by ignorance all the time happen. Therefore, you see, they just like wheel. You see, no end. Unless you remove this ignorance, the the twelve link, link my way, twelve link all the time. You see, go round, round, round. Although you see thousand millions times round, but still there, <coughs> uh, cannot go somewhere, somewhere else. So that's that's why you see the. We call the wheel of samsara. <clears throat> so now, uh, then again, the <coughs> what time should should we leave? Should finish? Two thirty. Two thirty. Huh? <coughs> We can go this like, I mean, we can go this, uh, this kind of talk, I think, hours and hours and days and days. <laughs> then you will be boring. <laughs> yeah. So, now the essence, now the, the, the teaching of Four Noble Truth and further elaborated the twelfth link. This, I think, the basis of all Buddhist teaching. Very, very important to know. Uh, then the, mm, you know, the, uh, since you say our future, our happiness depend on uh, action, right, right kind of action or positive action. What is the, mm, mm, what is the demarcation and the positive action and the negative action? And the positive, negative, the positive emotion and negative emotion. And now here is emotion. You see, as a result of my meeting with some scientist, uh, some is the, 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 I think psychologist, right? Psychologist. Uh, uh, some is the Western, I mean, scientist. Then uh, I got the is in, uh, knowledge, the emotion, not necessarily. Uh, means something negative. Emotion, it seems to see there's something, the uh, very forceful feeling, mental feeling, that perhaps emotion. In that case, emotion not necessarily be negative. There, there are negative emotion, uh, neg uh, positive emotion, such as strong karuna, which is strong uh, compassion, that also a kind of emotion. But that emotion is the right one. Then strong anger, strong jealousy, or strong the hatred, these are negative emotions. Why? The reason is the, those emotions or those actions which ultimately bring happiness to oneself, to others. These things consider as a positive. Those actions and emotion which, which you see, bring the, I would say, the suffering or uncomfortable, you see, the pains, that consider negative. So therefore, you see, they, uh, mm, that is the principle law, uh, principle law. Then, then, you see, they, Pains consider something negative. You see, the happiness consider something positive. Why? There's no other reason. Just a simply being, sentient beings simply want happiness. Do not want a suffering. That's the basic, uh, basic foundation of this demarcation. Nothing else. That's from the Buddhist viewpoint. So then how can and how come this being there's no reason. That's just the nature. The, in order to know you see, the phenomena, there are four ways to, to analyze. One, they we call the Chinjiriwa. Uh, which is based on the natural law. Mm -hmm. You see, like the dissolve uh, happiness, it's just a nature. And the, dis the feeling just I, feeling of I. It's just a nature. 
So this is you see, the, 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 the one way or the basis or basis, I think basis. On that basis, now you see the, uh, then again now the space is space. The different elements, it's just, it's just come like that. So that's the nature. So the nature law is the basis. On that basis, now the, the second way of investigation, that is, hmm, on that basis, now you see the, hmm, uh, and the causality, the causality sort of law. You see, external matters as well as internal, you see, minds and experiences, you see, both cases, you see, they, something happened and it, it make, you see, new production. Now today, now for example, you see, this morning, you see, my, suppose, you see, my mind feels, you see, happy and the rest of the day feel happy. Uh, some, you see, the morning, some, you see, some kind of you see, terrible anger or something happened. The rest of the day, even though anger no more there, but some traces of that anger still there. So that's the result of that, the morning's experience. And the external things, I mean, they, everybody knows. You see, that is the one way, you see, to, to investigate, to judge or to investigate. Then another way is the you see, the things are dependent on many other factors. So now, for example, is the mental peace of mind. Not necessarily, you see, come, or no, not come just, just through one source, but depend on many factors. And so, you see, you see the one, one new development happened here in some far, far remote area it impacts, it consequences reach this side. Something happened here, you see, consequences reach, or the vibration reach their side. So that is interdependent. Then, oh. then the fourth, so on the basis of these three laws, then the, uh, Yes, now, since this has happened, so there will be such, such things will happen. And if we do not want that event, we must deal with at, at now to avoid this, then the uh, result will be satisfactory. So that is the, you see, logic. And also, you see, the, to prove, you see, one point, you see, from, from there, of now here, it is such, such things happen because, uh, because of that. Then go like that. Then finally, you can pinpoint now, now, this is the reason why, you see, it happened something there. But finally, this is the causes. So that kind of is the, the logical thing. Uh, make, make link. Yeah. So that, that is the four way, four way to investigate. So the basic thing is the, the, the nature law is the basic thing. So now here, I think, you see, again, I think, you see, it is important to know when we talk about eco, feeling of egoistic feeling, usually, you see, people got the impression egoistic, because egoistic feeling is something negative. I do not think. Again, like, you see, the emotion, the Equistic, some kind of see, strong feeling of I or self. You see, there can be two, uh, two things, two, po two things, one positive, one negative. The, uh, the strong feeling of self. In the positive sense, you see, the, without that, we cannot develop human will or determination. Now, in this case, the infinite, the altruism, cannot develop without self-confidence, without f strong feeling of self. Impossible to develop such is the, the sense of responsibility and such is the 
infinite altruistic mental attitude. Impossible to develop. So in a way, you see, those persons, those beings, usually we call them Buddhisattva, I think they have tremendous sort of, you see, they eco feeling, I, self, self-confidence. The, the negative sense, they just, you see, feeling of I. Then, you see, disregard others' right. Disregard others, you see, their experience or feeling. Just to think oneself. That kind of you see, the, the feeling strong I is negative. And similarly, in the desire. The desire, all desire is not necessarily negative. Now, desire for benefit for all other or other sentient being, desire to desire for achievement of Buddhahood. This desire is a right desire. I think you see when we when we go in a city supermarket place, you see the when I now for example my own case in Switzerland or some other places I you see when I have enough time I found to go to supermarket. Mm. Although it's my pocket empty, but I go. <laughs> so, so you, you know, when I saw, you see, oh, beautiful, you see, articles, things, you see, like the watch or like the camera or some, you see, beautiful things there. Oh, you see, they, from one side of my mind, oh, I want this, I want that, I, I want to buy this, this, this. Then, too much. So then, another, from the another side of my mind, oh, do you really need these things? <laughs> Answer is no. <laughs> so the previous desire is attachment, or I think the desire without a proper reason. Isn't it? So therefore, I think this shows it's a certain kind of you see, discontented you see, desire. Then, you see, that kind of desire, you see, lead us more problem, isn't it? The reasonable desire, you see, in order to survive my life, you see, this much of is my food, this much of clothes. So even, you see, Buddha, for monk, they, he allowed 13 different clothes hmm, possess. And now, for example, my own case, hmm, the extra lower garment, I cannot keep with the feeling that this is mine. Although, you see, I have, I mean, they, I mean in, in practical reason, I need, you see, few extra lower garment. But these garment, mentally, I should keep these garment belong to someone else. But reality, my own. <laughs> but mentally, at least, mentally, you see, keep someone else's possess. Because, you see, the monk, you see, Buddha made some kind of you say, prohibition, or, you see, the Buddha makes limitation. You, you, only, you can keep only 13 different uh, clothes. So, since this not come from India, so in, among 13 articles, not mentioned, but this is something 14th. <laughs> This created in Tibet because cold climate. So this is, I think, exceptional. <laughs> so, so you see, these, you see, uh, I say they create some kind of you see, contentment. So the desire, contentment, I mean, desire with contentment, that's a proper desire, a reasonable desire. You see, that desire lead our day-to-day -day life and in spiritual sense, you see, life by life. And then stage by stage, finally, Buddhahood. Because of this desire. So I think it is important, you see, to, to make a distinction, you see, within these uh, strong emotions. So now the point is, now here, the, the basically, the negative, when we say negative action or negative emotion, means those things which ultimately bring some uncomfortable, some pains to both, you see, uh, oneself as well as the other. So, 
the uh, here now the, then the those action such as killing such as stealing such as lying such as what is it, the uh, sexual misconduct right? sexual misconduct now you see these creates uh, the although the temporarily that person who indulge these things may get some kind of immediate satisfaction but long run uh, uh, at, but you see at immediate level you see it hurts someone else then ultimately this action bring oneself you see suffering uh, so this action consider negative action then you see helping other telling faithfully you see they helping you see discipline oneself now these are positive because you see at the moment you see some even though you yourself may find sometimes difficult uh, to implement these you see the thing but the, but the other you see the for example you see the giving some food you see giving some money you see especially like you see teacher giving education or say like doctor you see giving other you see the good health so with sincere motivation you see these are these social social service is really Extremely, you see, very beneficial house of service. So these are, if you have, you see, proper motivation. These are really, you see, dharma work. So therefore, these immediately, you see, give others some some comfort. So this action we consider positive. So the it automatically become clear. The compassion is the source of ultimate source of positive house of service. Experience. Okay. experience yes positive you see emotions and positive action and a positive result hatred and jealousy is the negative ultimate negative ultimate source of is negative emotion negative what to say uh, action so it obviously become clear the karuna sanskrit word karuna or the compassion is the the key teaching key teaching of buddha so usually i i stated that the whole buddhist teaching if you make kasol not shall we uh, if you uh, synthesize mm. then uh, if you can help other you do it if you cannot other uh, i mean if you cannot uh, help other at least restrain from harming You see, that's the uh, that's the essence of Buddha Dharma. So both, in order to help other, the main source of that strength is compassion. That is compassion. Uh, then also the restraint from harming. Also they they based on karuna. So the karuna or compassion is the essence of teachings of Buddha. then the philosophical side why it should happen i mean why why it happen because my own interest so that in order to to have good future of my or myself you say i must i must not forget about others welfare so this is is the philosophical sort of kasoda philosophical uh, reasoning Ka, reasoning yes the concept of rel- relativity concept of interdependent nature you see that helps the realization of importance of others right others welfare you see, so that you see uh, you have to you see you have to cultivate compassion so this is the i think the basic buddhist teaching so sometime i jokingly told some is my friend the is the buddhist I mean, the principle of two buddhist teaching the, the regarding is the compassion now everybody now you see they uh, say importance of world peace 
So for world peace, the compassion is the key thing, key factor. Not only in the world, uh, world peace, but peace in the nation, peace in the family, peace in one individual. The key thing is compassion. Compassion is there, tolerance come. That tolerance also, you see, tolerance based on compassion is genuine tolerance. Tolerance based on weakness, or weakness, or you see, you, you cannot do something, uh, uh, then you see, they just accept it. That's actually not tolerance. Uh, tolerance means you can do something, yet restrain. That's a tolerance. So you see, that kind of tolerance uh, come on the basis of compassion. Yeah. Ex accept the other's right, they respect other's right. So that is the, uh, I think, the genuine the tolerance. So therefore, the compassion is something really important in the, in the matter of world peace. Then on the other hand, the, you see, the, as a modern, like I think modern situation now today, the everything become now is a global nature. When you talk about Australian economy, you see the Australian economy is it cannot function properly without you see, other continents, you see, the uh, situation. So you see, it depends one another. And previously, you see, one continent, even one family, one village, is more or less uh, exist completely independently or survived independently. No need others' cooperation. But now today, modern situation is just completely different. So the theory of interdependent is something very much relative. So um, when I met uh, some of my friend, and my mood also happy, good, then I tell him, see, people like this. So it's the Buddhist teaching, the karuna, or compassion, and the samubandha or the theory of dependent and arising is something very much relative in this modern age. So, so therefore, um, the keeping in your mind these two things, as a the foundation of Buddhist teaching. Then, you see, the further development, the you see, important thing is the realization of two truth. Now, two truth, although, you see, this two truth, concept of two truth, uh, even, you see, Sankhya philosophy, and many non-ancient Buddhist uh, philosophy in India, you see, all, you see, they uh, consider the importance of two truth. Then within Buddhist, the four uh, Buddhist school of thought, all, you see, have the concept of two truth. However, the, the, the more, I think, more thorough or more complete explanation about two truth is uh, only in the Chitta Mantra school of thought and the Madhimika school of thought. You see, the, uh, I mean, these two school of thought, they accepted the, the theory of Shunya, the ultimate reality, the Shunya theory. The other two, you see, lower Buddhist school of thought, accept only Anathma theory. No precisely, you see, the, um, making emphasis the important uh, in the first two uh, tenets of Buddhist school of thought, uh, there is no explanation about the selflessness of phenomena, even though they explain about the selflessness of person. <clears throat> so the two, sometimes we call the two Mahayana school of thought. That's Chitta Mantra, or in other words, mind only school. Uh, school. Uh, then the Madhimika middle school. Where? Middle way school. Middle way, middle way of school of thought. <clears throat> Within these two, the school of thought, 
the further subdivisions. There, are, in Chitta Mantra also, there are, there are basically two, and within there, again, you see subdivisions. And the Madhimika also is basically the Sodantic Madhimika and the Prasankika Madhimika. And the Sodantic Madhimika, there again is a subdivisions. So now we consider the, the Prasankika Madhimika philosophy is the best one. The more, say, the complete, rather, more, say, more subtle and more complete. Now this judgment comes only on the basis of investigation, not relying on Buddha's quotation. Obviously, you see, each one, all four schools of thought, you see, each one have its own, the sources of Buddha's reference. word. Ah. Source of reference uh, is made to the Buddha, no doubt. So if we rely on uh, Buddha's own word, then each one has the see, Buddha's word. So, you see, we cannot judge this is better, this is, you see, the, I mean, this is right and this is wrong. We cannot say. So, therefore, Buddha himself stated the, um, the, I say, in order to acceptance, you see, my teaching, you should not accept after your own thorough investigation, uh, the, not out of respect. You see, the acceptance, you see, my teaching should not come out of respect, but rather thorough investigation. He stated, you see, like that. So this statement, you see, give us some kind of liberty to investigate about Buddha's own word. So, so as a result, like Nagarjuna or Arya Asanga, the Shantadeva or the uh, Chantakirti, Dharmakirti, Dignak, all these Indian pundits, you see, they, uh, they took the liberty, you see, to carry the, how say, the investigation. Um, elaborative, right? Investigation. Right? Uh, elaborate investigation. Elaborate investigation. So, so the, the Prasangika, according to the Prasangika Madhimika philosophy, now the two tooth, the truth are being explained in that highest school, Buddhist school of thought, which is termed as the conventional truth and the ultimate truth. Uh, conventional truths are those truths which are found by a conventional mind, whereas the ultimate truths are those that are found by a wisdom mind. So now the meaning is something like this. For example, take oneself as an example. When I examine myself or someone as a human, a human being, then you see, we can, we can identify that human being. And, and we can find whether that human being uh, in this room or other room, so we can find out. You see, then finally we can find the person uh, through his, ad, his or her address. We can find that person. Uh, that's one, uh, one level. That's a conventional level. On that level, we can, I mean, I mean, we can accept there is the existence of human being, existence of environment. The all, all phenomena, all things are there on that level. Then mm, the further... The, Go further there. Yes, I know myself. Here I am one. I am here. One human being. One Tibetan. Mm. One Tibetan bishu. Tibetan monk. Now then, mm, if I investigate the, this is my body, which I am seeing is just my body. And, the, 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 and those people here, I just, you see, uh, I'm seeing your body, and your case, you, see, you can you can also you see see uh, through hearing you see my voice, and uh, how nice my English also you you you, you can see. You see. <laughs> uh, then then you see through my talk 
you can also, you see, judge what kind of, you see, uh, thought is going on on that person's head. You see, that also you can judge, and roughly, isn't it? So therefore, you see, still, uh, this, you see, you can see the body of the person, you hear the, the voice of the person, and you can read, in certain extent, the, you see, the mind of that person. But still, where is the person? Now, answer is something, oh, 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 or something like that, isn't it? So, you see, you, we cannot find, you see, pinpointly, we cannot find, you see, this is the person, beside this body, beside this mind, the voice, this is the person. You see, we cannot, uh, we cannot point, point. point out, you see, that person. Again, the, yes, I, I can call, and everybody, you see, uh, can recognize this is my body, this is my voice, this is my brain, my, my thought. That also perfect, right one to say like that. But in, in, real, in real sense, if we further investigate, without investigate, we can accept, we can accept. Yes, there is person, there is the one Tibetan there. But if we investigate, we cannot, we cannot find that is a real person. So then, uh, finally, the answer will be like this. The person, like a person, but all other you see, phenomena, including Buddha himself, including Shunya itself, the emptiness, the meaning of emptiness or voidness itself, you see, uh, came to being uh, on, the, uh, on the basis of without investigation. On, on the basis of many factors, we designated. So on mere designated nature, it can work. It, it can function properly. But if we uh, dissatisfy uh, that, that reality, and through, investig through further, further investigation, uh, we cannot find anything. Because things are exist due to other factor, never exist by independently. So the, uh, the existence of independent nature is right from the beginning, never happened. So in reality, in essentially, all phenomena are absence of independent existence. So therefore, things are in the nature of emptiness. So that's the Madhyamika philosophy, the, particularly Prasangika philosophy says like that. Now that is the, the ultimate reality. Then again, the, once you feel, you get some kind of feeling about that nature, then if you investigate uh, further about that ultimate reality, ultimate truth, then again we cannot find the ultimate truth also. So therefore, Buddha says the empty of the uh, emptiness of emptiness. So you go further, you see nothing can be found. So including Sunya itself, including emptiness itself, or Buddha it himself, you see, nothing can be ultimately can be identified. Right. So that's the absolute truth or the ultimate truth, right, ultimate truth. Now why is it there's such as a theory, you see, uh, consider something very important? The, because negative emotion, the way to develop, and the way grasp when negative emotion developed, you see, they, that, you see, they, towards enemy, towards friend, you see, they, uh, when, we, when we fully developed, or the, yes, developed the anger or attachment, during that moment, you see, our mental attitudes towards that object is such that the, uh, when negative emotions develop, the object appears as something uh, uh, from there, something independently, you see, hundred percent negative, so that the negative emotion, you see, the, uh, 
consider, you see, that is something really uh, negative and want, you see, the no more there. That kind of, you see, the negative ill feeling or hated feeling. Then another case, the, when desire, attachment developed, that, that object appears 100%, you see, positive. So during that moment, you see, they, you feel the independent, absolute positive or beautiful or something, something good appears. On that basis, on that appearance, your attachment, kasota, grasp. So that is the reality. So the, in reality, the both your enemy, your friend, is that enemy not necessarily 100% negative. The, your friend also not necessarily 100% positive. Both are, you see, the half-half. That's quite nature. So therefore, you see, the, uh, that, the concept, that conception is actually uh, There is a concept which is based on wrong, percep wrong perception of the object. So in order to reduce you see, that concept, now it is important to realize the ultimate nature of the, of the phenomena. So that is the endodose ray. There's a counterforce. Counterforce about that negative emotion. So that's why you see, the Shunya theory become very important in order to eliminate all these negative emotion, negative concept. You see, uh, it has become very, very important to have realization of that uh, ultimate, ultimate reality. I think so. Once you see, we the the uh, now the experience about the ultimate reality, the experience right, experience about the realization of ultimate reality. At the beginning, just a word, just a word, uh, but then think, analyze oneself, and you see the during meditation or say or say a moment, you see, think about that kind of reality. Then next, uh, next few moment, you see, look, look at you see, some uh, the appearances. Then also, you see, visualize, uh, develop some kind of your attachment or your anger. Uh, try to visualize. Then what you, what you, what, what, what kind of your feeling? What kind of your the mental attitude towards you see, that object? Then again, think about the reality. Go, go like this, pain, pain. Uh, you should uh, do this practice alternately. Mm. Then eventually, the appearance about the, uh, the opposite appearance of ultimate reality comes clearer, clearer, clearer. Then that is something like a target, you see, to destroy through the middle way reasons. Here, the Rebbe Kaasada, Lamji Kaasada, Nishir There are two objects of negation, object of negation that can be refuted through logic and the object of negation when you practice on the path. Lamji Kaasada is not the same. Rebbe Kaasada is not the same. The object or the hindrances while on your practice on the path should be something which is existing. Whereas the object of uh, uh, reputation, object of uh, using the logic is something that is non-existing. Because uh, the object to be refuted by logic should exist, uh, should not exist. If it is something that exists, then it cannot be refuted. Now the question arises, if uh, something is non-existent, uh, what is the purpose and use of refuting it? Because it is already non-existent. Then the answer is, one uh, definitely has to refute that non-existent object of negation through logic because of our wrong conception, even if things do not exist, 
but we see things as existing independently from its own site. And because of this wrong conception and confusion, we engage into all uh, negativities. So through that process, uh, one should be able to uh, refute the object of negation and through that process, remove the delusions. So you see, to investigate constantly, then you get the a little bit, you see, the, the deeper sort of feeling. Yes, there is, oh, there is something, something, something. You, you, you may feel that kind of thing. Then further practice, further investigation. Uh, then, uh, it's a short moment, you see, you can meditate or you can concentrate uh, on the, the aspect of shunya. That's just nothing, just empty. Actually, not mere nothingness, but the meaning is interdependent. But when it appears just nothing during that moment, to, to, that, to that mind, uh, so that duration, meditate on that part, that aspect can increase. So the more increase, the time, duration, more, right? right. Longer, longer period, the result will be different. So then, afterward, when we see, you see some, uh, something, when we, when we deal with our, our ordinary daily experience or daily contact, the, the neutral mind, with neutral mind or positive mind comes, no problem. When negative mind comes, as soon as they start to increase the, the mental attitude, grasp the independent nature, and because of the previous experience, now that comes weak. Compare, at before, compare experience before, you see, it automatically becomes weak. So time goes like that. Further, further investigation, further practice, further practice, and plus the one-pointedness of mind, training of samadhi, go together. Then the, the samadhi, the purpose of samadhi is channelize all your mental energy. At the moment, our mind scattered, like water. So one, you see, they make it two channel, channelize. Then the force of our mind become forceful. Then channelized mind, concentrate on particular object, then it can go much deeper, can, can penetrate. penetrate. So that's the purpose of samadhi. The samadhi itself is something common between Buddhist, Buddhist practitioner and the Hindu practitioner and many other practitioners. The samadhi itself is something common. But then you see they, about vipassana, the realization of shunya, then is something different. So then at, at the beginning, even you see the, with combination of samadhi, at the Nina the Chava. Nina the Chava. Uh, then there is the dualistic appearance. Mm. Then further goes, then eventually your mind completely absorbed in the nature of shunya. Then no more duality, duality appearances. Now further goes that, then it begin to eliminate the negative imprints in our mind. Then further goes, this is step by step, then finally all negative imprints in our mind can eliminate through that process. The final achievement is Buddhahood. But it seems very far but possible. That is a Buddhist belief. Because each individual, even insects, all have the Buddha nature. The Sugata Shindaya or Tathagata Garma. So because the seed is there, the Buddhist concept is, the sin seed is there, so they entirely it depends on our own effort and our own will. Otherwise, the basic facility or seed is there. So that's the uh, about the Buddhist, hmm, Buddhist how to say, idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, finally, my dedication. Sanjo Samjo Rimboje, my dear Bana, Jayoje, Java, Yamba, Mava, Yakon, Ekondo, Pawarajo, Pama, Samja, Tamja, Dada, Danjo, Jing, and Ro, Tamja, Tado, Tombot, Sanjo, Samba, Gana, Sushu, Dada, Kunji, Melam, Drovjo, Jay. Thank you.
There's just a couple of very uh, small announcements that I think will benefit you if you would just stand still or sit still for a moment. First of all, uh, to those of you uh, who are coming to the evening talk, and I encourage you all to come, please come and bring your friends. The reserve seating should be approached through entrances 4, 5 and 6, and 15, 16 and 17. If you wish to ask His Holiness a question, we ask that you write it out and leave it at the information booth, which is outside in the concourse. You leave your question at the information booth, there is a possibility that His Holiness will be read the question and try to answer it tonight.